Thanks, Debbie. Um, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I know it's the Easter break for many of you, so I appreciate your time this morning. Um, although probably a bit of a strange Easter break this time. So I hope you're all well and keeping safe. Um, this morning, we're going to use the next hour and a half, maybe just slightly less, just to, to go over some basics. So the idea of these training sessions is that um, it's a bit of a, an overview as a reminder of who MDR and what we do and the um, kind of crux in the data. And then I'll go into the tool and we'll do some basic um, product orientation, navigation, and I'll just pick up on some key reports that you might use. So looking down the attendees list, we've got a really nice mix of kind of roles um, and also users. So I know there's a couple of people new to, to roles in colleges and new to MZ data. So I think this first part will be really, really useful. Apologies for anyone who has heard this before, but um, I think it's always good just to give a little bit of context to um, where the data comes from and what, you, what you're actually gonna be looking at in the, um, in the tool. So I should probably introduce myself. My name's Carla. I'm the Account Director for Further Education at MZ. Just a bit of a reminder of who we are and what we do. So. MZ stands for Economic Modeling Specialist International. That is a bit of a mouthful, so we, we shorten that down to MZ. Um, we're based in Hampshire, in um, Basingstoke in the UK, and we work across three main sectors. So the education sector, which is um, predominantly FE, so we have the biggest kind of footprint in, in general further education colleges but we also work across HE, um, prison educations. I know there's a couple of people on from Novus this morning and um, the careers IAG sector. So secondly, we work across the economic development sector. So these are um, kind of organizations such as your local LEPs, uh, combined authorities, county councils, um, local authorities, those types of organizations. And where we see a really nice um, kind of use of the tool is where we've got all education providers within an area, so FE and HE, and um, working together with the local LEP and everyone's got MD data or access to, to MD LMI. So what we see is a really nice kind of sweet spot and where um, kind of there's a, there's a common language through labour market data. We're not kind of arguing about where the data's come from, but rather what we're going to do with the data and what the next steps are. We also um, more recently work across employment agencies or the employment sector. So these are companies like recruitment agencies, um, corporate and professional bodies. So as you can probably guess, some of our work around the COVID um, kind of hard hit areas um, in terms of job postings is, is really, really useful to that kind of sector at the minute. So we have three, I suppose, offerings. We've got the software. We'll be looking at the um, analyst software today. So um, software tools include analyst, which is the full tool. Some of you might have iterations of that. So you might have the course vision um, analyst product or um, kind of made up of a few different modules. And we also have the career coach product. We offer all... Um, systems through API solutions as well. So this basically means that you can take apart the analyst tool um, or the career coach tool, look at the data and display that on dashboards, um, internal um, VLE Moodles, things like that. And then we also offer consulting. So custom consulting reports that basically allow um, you to kind of pull apart data, display it in different ways and answer key questions that maybe the tool doesn't help to help to do um, in the best way. So the international in MZ basically means that we um, have a headquarters in Moscow, Idaho, which is over in the US, a lovely, lovely state on the west coast of America. Um, and they are eight hours behind, which pretty much means that we can offer um, around the clock support, which is, is great for our clients when they get an hour at the end of the day to kind of run through with a tool um, it's really good to have that support network at the other side of the, the pond as, as they say. So Strada, just a little bit about Strada. So we're owned by a company called Strada, nothing much more to add there other than 
we are one of their affiliates and our mission aligns really really nicely with our with with them theirs so it's their mission to improve lives by forging clear <clears throat> and more purposeful pathways between education and employment it's our mission at MZ to help people make better decisions relating to the world of work. So we do that through offering um, robust, complete labour market data, which we're going to go into a little bit more detail about. But basically, what our mission is, is to use data to drive that economic prosperity. So we want to inform and connect three critical audiences to the people who are looking for good work, the employers who are looking for good people with the right skills that, that they need to run that um, workforce effectively and, and at its most productive. And then educators, <clears throat> people who are looking to build good programs, um, courses and engage the students. So we want to do this through the common language of skills. I think we've talked a lot in the past about qualifications um, courses but what we really want to do is, is unpick that and look look in much more detail at skills what skills do people learn within courses qualifications and how does that really kind of translate into those um, those roles that employers are looking for so that's the overview on the company um, I can't imagine many people have got much questions there, but happy to kind of pause after this section. I'm going to go through some MZ data basics. So a bit of an overview of where the data is from, um, what you're actually using in the tool and, and how we put piece it all together to give you the, the most up to date, comprehensive labour market data set. So to begin with, we have granular but historic information from NOMIS and Office for National Statistics. So this is what is freely available and open to the public um, and it, it's government data sources. <coughs> so it's things such as the annual business inquiry, um, BREZ, the labour force survey, all of these different data sets that are pulled together to create a large data set. Anybody who, who's tried using this um, to kind of glean any kind of information from or, or analyze knows it's very difficult. Um, things are kind of dotted all over the place. They're not clear, it's hard to pull any type of analysis from it. So what we do at MZ is basically combine all of this. Um, it's granular but historic information. So that goes back to 2003. And this is real stuff that's happened. So we extrapolate all of the trends um, and then project forward. So what we have then from this is future employment projections. So industry occupation detail um, up to 2028 at the minute and we remodel annually. So you've got the granular historic information, so stuff that's happened. A team of data engineers and economists will extrapolate the trends and basically model forward based on what's happened. So if the economy is to go at the same way as it has done over the past 15, 16 years, this is what we think will happen. So we obviously layer that up with um, a few different data sources and, and different techniques. So we've got Working Futures, which is a summary forecasts data set. So we project um, Working Futures as a government data set that basically does very similar but projects forward um, summary forecasts. So this was last updated in 2016. The trouble with any of the government data sets is that they're very much released when they feel like it. So this allows us to have a bit of a baseline, but basically we'll, we'll project forward every year anyway. We then add in um, extra layers of detail. So we've got things like ONET, which is a skills and competencies database. So this allows us to open up um, Kind of each occupation and have a look at the skills tasks and competencies within each one of these data sets to see um, kind of what you would do within the occupation and then we've got job postings data so this is exactly that it's up-to-date recruitment trends um, basically um, a, an aggregate of all job postings on the internet month by month i think there's around 
800,000 every month and we basically pull out key bits of information such as who the companies are employing, how many job postings um, for this job title or occupation, where they're based and key things like average advertised salary and also um, hard and soft skills. So that's where you really get kind of the the finger on the pulse of what local economies are doing, local employers. So the structural traditional stuff is really, really good to help us understand what's kind of happening um, in terms of structured data. So this is what has happened up to date and this is what we think will happen over the next five, 10 years. But the real time big data um, gives us a different type of context. So um, looking at kind of job postings, uh, who's hiring, and it really helps us start to kind of inform things like course design, um, helps with employer engagement, any type of um, kind of business development. So who do we target for these types of opportunities? If we're looking at apprenticeships or work placements, who do we know in the local economy who's hiring for these types of jobs? And what types of skills do the learners need to gain from the college or education provider to be able to, to get that job. <coughs> Excuse me. So we've got the structured data, which is the purposefully collected and collated data from government surveys. So this helps us build a comprehensive view of the workforce by industry, occupation and geography. We've also got that big data. So that's the job persons data. And this looks at extremely large scale data captured from um, transactions. So we're looking at a specific data collection exercise. So job postings from different web-based sources to help build context and more detailed insights. Used together, really, really powerful. Um, used alone, especially big data, not, not particularly helpful in looking at things like forward planning. So you wouldn't use job persons data to understand what the next the trends are for the next 12 months, two years, five years. The data won't tell you that. It'll tell you what's going on right now. And what it really does is sense check this structured data. So we think that this occupation's growing over the next three, five years. Okay, so who's hiring for that now? What does the local job demand look like now? And if it's high, um, if it's set to, to grow, what kind of skills do we need to build into courses so learners will get a job? Are there any questions at that point, Debbie? Just that's quite a lot of, of information before we go into the next section. <clears throat> no, no at the moment, Carla, thanks. And if you do have a question, just pop it in the, in the side and we're going to stop at um, regular intervals to make sure that I can answer when relevant. So in this previous slide, I talked about these SICK and SOC codes. For, for many of you, it might be the first time you've heard of those. They're fairly, fairly important when you start to look at the analyst tool because we deal in SICK and SOC codes. Um, everything that we look at will be given a one, two, three or four digit SICK or SOC code. <clears throat> so industry, um, industries are measured in, in SICK classification codes. So that's Standard Industrial Classification Code. Whenever you see this, just think industry. And what we basically do is use, this is um, worldwide, there's a, there's a ranking system from one digit to four digit. A one digit industry might be something like construction. So construction's growing at 10% in the East Midlands. That's fine, but it doesn't really tell us the, the, the detail. So something like a four digit industry, might be um, the industry of construction of bridges and tunnels. So this is that sub-industry and it's going into much more detail than construction. So construction could be construction of bridges and tunnels, it could be construction of non-residential and residential buildings, or it could be construction of railroads, for example. So having this bit of information, this is what you might get from your LEP or um, in a kind of, skills um, manifest for the for the region are helpful but it doesn't help us start to build curriculum same applies for occupation so standard occupation classification is SOC and we'll be dealing mainly in SOCs today 
um, education providers are training learners for jobs. So looking at SOX is much more um, kind of informative than looking at industry, but industry is important and we'll, we'll go between the two. <clears throat> so a one digit SOC might be something like skilled trades. So skilled trades are growing in the East Midlands at 10%. Again, doesn't really tell us much information, but four digit might give us that bricklayers and masons. So again, it's a subgroup. It gives you the extra layer of detail. So if we go back to that example of construction industry is growing at 10% in the East Midlands, is that construction of railroads or is it construction of um, non-residential buildings? Do we need engineers or do we need bricklayers and masons? So absolutely vital when we're looking at curriculum planning, when we're looking at um, equipping our learners with the right skills for the right jobs. Okay. I also talked about that geography. So we have the geographic detail down to local authority. In the same way that we break down those sick and SOP codes, we can go from nation to government office region, which um, for my region, for example, it would be Yorkshire and Humber. We've then got the unity authority, which would be kind of um, Lancashire or South Yorkshire or um, Humberside, for example, and then we've got the local authority. So the smallest region that you've got, so Leeds, for example. Um, the, it, again, very, very important to be able to break down into geographic detail from that national to local authority um, categorization, mainly because what happens at national level doesn't necessarily translate into local authority level. So if we look at this occupation of call and contact centre occupations, so that's a SOC code, it's quite long winded, but it's the, I suppose, the official title for that job. And this is job growth from 2009 to 2014. And this is just taken from the tool, but what we basically did was look at the growth between 2009 and 14 for England, which is 14%, within the East Midlands, which was actually an 11% decrease. So if you're just looking at this, you'd miss the, the decrease for the East Midlands. But then again, if you were a college in the East Midlands and you didn't account for that local authority or county level, you probably were missing out on a 234% increase. Um, so again, just to kind of illustrate and highlight the importance of having that data down to the, the lowest kind of available level. If you were looking at that high level and thought, well, it's declining by 11% in the East Midlands for this occupation, we don't, there's no skills need. Well, actually, you might be doing a lot of learners a disservice um, as there's a huge demand in one particular area. So local authorities can vary in jobs. Um, if you think about the black country, for example, made up of four different local authorities, what's going on in Sandwell is very different to what's going on in Dudley, um, et cetera. So um, knowing your region is vital when thinking about curriculum planning, business development, and even student engagement. So knowing where to focus different um, kind of marketing plans and, and strategies. Okay, any questions, Debbie? No, thank you. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry, I've um, developed a really annoying tickly throat. So next section is just a bit of an overview of, of why to use labour market data. Um, the, ne the next slides focus predominantly on curriculum planning, so I won't go into those because I just want to give a general overview. We've got a lot of different roles on the on the webinar but I think in general curriculum planning is where we start so knowing that you've got the labour market data to back up the intent and impact of your curriculum is vital so again we're hearing from Ofsted the need to show rationale and intent um, and through to impact in the three eyes in the new education inspection framework is vital so we're kind of calling on curriculum managers to to be informed about why they do what they do this then 
kind of translates into student outcomes. So if you've got the right curriculum that meets local labour market needs, you then need to go out to your students and tell them this. So how do you attract um, and kind of market what you do? And then once you've got the students in the door um, through showing them kind of key nuggets of, of labour market data into occupations, um, growing occupations and industries within the region, how do you then successfully get them through the qualification to get them to progress to, to meaningful outcomes? And thirdly, that business community um, section. So how do you effectively engage with employers within the region and really show kind of relevance in what you offer? Um, kind of show the learners that your organisation is the place to go for them to get the skills that, that they need for the job. This in turn will give you kind of a, a good reputation within the business community. And all this falls really, really nicely into fulfilling your institution's overall mission whether that be for that individual learner um, and impact or kind of the social, economic and, and community value of really being um, kind of a, a great organisation that impacts on the local community. So I'm going to stop there on the um, slides and we're going to jump straight into the tool. So I'm probably just going to use the next 40 minutes. We'll probably finish around 11 o'clock just to go over some really basic navigation for the tool. And then we'll have time for questions. And I've had a little look through what people um, in the registration form have kind of highlighted as key, key um, bits for me to cover. So we'll try and go through any of those. But if there is a working example, just pop it in the box and we can work through that too. So your analyst homepage, when you log in, will look something like this. It won't be exactly like this. You won't have a list of projects if you're new to the tool and you've never used it before. And you probably won't have a list of bookmarked reports. Um, again, this is for when you get more familiar with the tool and you can add key reports to your homepage. <clears throat> you have a list of modules down the left hand side. So occupations, industries, job postings, a lot of what we talked about. You won't have a few of these, but again, don't worry. Um, the tool's made up of a lot of different modules and whatever you've got in your subscription will show up here. You might just have the course vision section, which we'll look at in detail, but if you do, this is what you'll see when you, you come to your homepage. So kind of standard homepage, you've got your knowledge base link here. So this is a link to your online support in terms of getting started tutorials, data questions. So a lot of the things like, how do we calculate projections? How often is the data updated? And then a glossary. So we're using a lot of LMI jargon. So the glossary is a really helpful place to kind of go through what annual openings means, what the annual business survey is, um, what we mean by age demographics and things like that. So they'll take you to short tutorial videos or um, just kind of step by step on how to do something. Our MD YouTube um, page is also really, really helpful. Everything we do in terms of things like this, we record and pop on there. So have a little look through there and there'll be a lot of um, kind of specific webinars around uh, curriculum planning, for example, or different topics that will give you a different um, look into the tool. So also in this support section, you will have the customer service rep details and whoever your account manager is. So that will be myself or it will be my colleague, John Gray. So you have our contact details. Um, so get in touch if you need to. And then you've also got this PDF, which is an overview of the MZ UK data process. So bit of bedtime reading. I know we've all got extra time on our hands. So if anyone wants to know more information about the sources, how we look at historic employment or projected um, workflow, just, just pop the support button and it's in there. Down in the bottom right hand corner, we have the intercom. So this basically will allow you to pop a query on there and then anybody who's online will be able to get back to you or that'll come through to us um, 
to your account manager so we'll be able to get in touch really helpful as as i said earlier a lot of you guys will get a chance to look at this out of kind of nine to five standard hours somebody will be online or this will come straight through to us so we can get back to you as soon as possible just helps you really quickly kind of jot down your question or query so um that's the basics for the home page so knowledge base intercom support with your customer service rep details or your account manager and then you've got the about md data there so the first place to start and probably the most simple report is the economy overview so this is in industries and then in each of those modules, you've got kind of a whole range of individual reports. The economy overview is here. So if that wasn't on my home page, you'd have an option to add bookmark and a plus button. Just give that a tick and then that will show up on your home page. So as we go through these, um, if you've got the tool open or just jot down the reports that I'm looking at and then you can add these to your home page so you know what we've looked at. So the economy overview is a really good starting point just to get kind of an overview of what's going on in the economy that your college serves. So what we do, the simplest version of the report builder that we have is basically just select a region. It will do the rest for us. So there's a few different ways that we can select that region. If you know where you are, you can just type in the um have a look you can just type in the region that you're in we can also do drive time or radius from address which work in very similar ways we click on the radius from address we'll have an option to type in city address or postcode so if i just type in leeds city college it'll bring up a couple of options and then say we want to look at 30 mile radius from this address works in exactly the same way as kind of google maps it will give us that region and then select regions by we can choose county or local authorities so it'll just give us a nice 30 mile radius from the address that we've chosen and then you'll have all a list of all of the the 16 local authorities selected. Really good for when you're not kind of sure what local authorities that you serve or would fit into that radius from address. Drive time is exactly the same, but instead of putting in 30 minutes or 30 miles, sorry, you just put in 30 minutes. Once you've pulled that region, you get an option to save here. So we can click on save and we did 30 mile radius from Leeds City College. Group description, click on save and then that will save in the groups. That just means that every single time you go on to the group to the group section you can just find that there. You won't have to do that every single time. You might already have some groups pre-populated within your subscription or your account that other people have done. So we often have the let regions pre-populated in there or somebody else in your organization might have done them so if i was to choose a lee city region lep region so this was what was classified in 2015 what that will do is pull each of the local authorities within that region into that box and then you can run the report okay so as i said that's all you need to do for the report builder for the economy overview it's the most simple version and then what we basically will look at is kind of key key facts and figures for this LEP region, which is the Leeds city region. So the first thing that we get given is some key figures on population, total regional employment and average wages per job. So the, you'll see here that there's a 2019 in brackets. This is basically that granular bit historic information so it's what's happened up to present day so we're not looking at projections in these three figures it's actually what's what's out there so these key takeaways just relate to these three headlines at the top so as of 2019 the regions which is the lep city region of leeds 
population increased by 2.9 percent since 2014. It's also expected to increase by another 2 percent between 2019 and 2024. So really kind of broad headline figures about the population. In terms of jobs, so regional employment, the jobs in the LEP region have increased by 6.8% and this fell short of the national growth rate by 0.9%. So the national growth rate for that time period was 77 and Leeds City LEP grew at 6.8%. So slight, slight, um, slightly short of that growth rate. The top three industries in 2019 in this region were hospital activities, primary education and restaurant and mobile food service activities. So this is that one digit SICK that we talked about, so standard industrial classification code. So this is just showing the industries within the region which are the largest in 2019 um, at that one digit SICK. So we can go into the tool and look in lots more detail at what those sub industries are but at the minute it's just given us that that high level view. We've got some labour force breakdown numbers. So basically the total working age population from 16 to 64, how many people were employed and unemployed in the labour force and not, and then the under 16 and over 64. So a bit of an overview of who's employed in what categories. And then we have some educational attainment. So basically how many people in that region have no qualifications all the way up to degree and above. So we can see from the text 25.3% of that selected region's residents. So again, region here means the Leeds City Let region possess a degree or above, which is 4.4% below the national average. And then we've got 7.2% that hold a higher education below degree level which is 1.3 below the national average. So a bit of an overview. We've then got some demographics. So 2019 age and ethnicity demographics. So an even spread and the predominantly sit within that white um, ethnicity demographics. Again, you'll have noticed on the homepage, there's a whole other demographics tab. You can go into this in much more detail, but the idea of this report is that it just gives you a really good overview of each of the bits of, of the data that we've got in one report. We then look at some population characteristics. So how many millennials are in the region compared to the UK average? The retiring soon number, so the retirement risk, which is about average for this region, and then racial diversity. So again, about average. So this is the UK average, and then up to the blue line is where that sits within the region. So that's all the, the social type metrics. So demographics, population characteristics, um, kind of headline figures on employment, population and wages. And then we get into those three kind of growth indicators. So industries, occupations, and then the skills stuff that we talked about in the, in the presentation. So this shows us the largest industries by number of jobs. So you've got a number of different toggles across the top here. Largest industries by number of jobs, and you can also switch that to growth. So jobs basically just means how many people were employed in the industry. So Wholesale and retail trade, repair of motor vehicles and motorcycles was the industry with the largest number employed in 2019. The purple bar shows where this industry is in terms of jobs in the Leeds city region. And then this gray bar shows the national average. So you've always got that national average comparison there. Okay. Growth obviously gives you that table with different metrics. So basically, which industry has seen the biggest growth up to 2019? Different top three. So we've got professional, scientific and technical, accommodation of food service, and then transportation storage. And then again, we can toggle by wages. So which industries pay the most? Completely different top three again. So information and communication, finance and insurance, and then 
electricity, gas, steam, and air conditioning supply. <clears throat> so this is industries. We can switch to occupations, again, at that one digit, but starts to give us an idea of the largest occupations by jobs or growth. So occupations that have grown the most are occupation and professional, elementary and professional and technical. Jobs or occupations that pay the most are professional, managers, directors and senior officials, kind of skilled trades type occupations. And then just by employing the most people, professional, elementary and technical. So you can see elementary here, which is um, usually things like warehousing, logistics, storage is way above the national average here. So industries, occupations, and then the third, third thing that we look at is in-demand skills. So basically, over the last three months, what are the top hard skills that employers are asking for within this region? So and this is not national, it's within the Leeds City Let region. Again, you've got the national average comparison, but we've got accounting, auditing, and agile software development. So that's kind of a web web based skill so that's interesting to know we've got sql in there as well which is another programming language and then we've also got things like nursing warehousing business development so it gives us a really good overview on top of the kind of occupations and industries of what employers are asking for so what in terms of skills so you can see that kind of fits in with that it and then financial and professional industry and occupation growth that we've seen. So that's over the last three months. The skills demand by quarter, this is what we call a Sankey diagram. So this will basically show us the top 10 skills in the LEP region for Leeds by quarter. So how has that scale risen or fallen from January 2019 up to March 2020? So it's just every three months and whether that's risen or fallen. So let's have a look. We've got business development, which took a bit of a plummet, but then has grown again. So it's um, back in third place. Auditing and accounting have stayed at the top. And then SQL programming, although it's kind of in that top 10, it's predominantly fallen over the last three months. Um, be really interesting to see this when it's updated next for the next quarter, especially with um covid and the, the job postings that are falling there so that's the economy overview wherever you see these three dots you can download the image so you can take anything off the tool and um, just be sure to reference it you can do that kind of table by table or packet if you like but right at the top you've got an export button so you can export that into pdf or word and you can also save the project. So when we looked on that home page, there was that list of projects that are on my account. We would just save this as economy overview for the city let region and then save, and that'll save to your home page. You can see there as well, there's a tick box. So you can share this project with other users in your organization. So if you tick that, everyone at the college that you work for will be able to see that. Okay. Lovely. That's the economy overview. Um, Debbie, any questions? No, no questions. Thank you. So a really good place to start, but as I say, it gives you that kind of one digit sick and sock, which we said weren't very helpful when you're looking at things like um, business or curriculum planning. So the next thing we'll look at is the occupation table. So this is that granular historic data that we looked at. So economy overview is everything up to present day. So the occupation table starts to project forward. You can do exactly the same for the industry table here. So you've got two, two reports, industry and occupation. We're gonna focus on the occupation table, but you can do the same in industries. So again, that's bookmarked to my homepage, but you can find that in occupations tab down the left-hand side, and then you've got occupation table. Again, if you want to add that to your homepage, just add bookmark and click that button there. 
So this is a table form. So this displays occupations with all the data relating to jobs, growth, wage, and demographics. So if we click on the report, we get that report builder again. So as I said on the economy overview, that's probably the simplest form of that report builder. Here, you've got a few more options. So occupation table, we want to look at all occupations available. You can limit by occupation once you get more familiar with the tool, but we'll just leave it on all available for a second. Again, choose the region that you're interested in. So drive time, radius from address, we went through on the economy overview. Groups, we can just choose that 30 mile radius from Leeds City College that we chose before. To keep it uniform, I will use the Leeds City Region LEP region again. So I select that. And then on this report, we want to look at jobs and growth, which is new jobs. So we want to look at all occupations and we want to look at how they're going to grow over the time period that we choose. And then we also want to look at openings. So jobs and growth basically looks at new job growth. If we click on openings, we also get things like replacement jobs or what we call job churn. So people leaving the workforce for retirement, for example. So this will include everything. Um, and it's a much more realistic indicator of jobs that need filling when we're thinking about curriculum planning or identifying skills gaps. So we'll run that report. And then you'll know there's a couple, you'll notice there's a couple more things down the side here. We've got the time frame. So this is where you get 2003 base data up to 2028. So I'll choose 2020 to 2025, which is the next five years. And then underneath that, we've got the class of worker. So we want to look at employees, so people employed by companies. And then we also want to look at self-employed, which is classed as proprietors. So we'll always keep those two ticked unless you're doing some specific analysis on, on one or the other. So this won't mean much at the minute, but what I'm going to do is add the column for education level. So whole host of custom data selection here, but choose education level and select. And then what I'm going to do is click on this column here, which is 2020 to 2025 change. So that will sort by that column. So basically you can click on the top of any of those and it will sort by that column. So what we then instantly get is all occupations in the LEP Lead City region area, which will have the biggest change or growth from 2020 to 2025, which is the time frame that we've chosen here. We get the number of jobs in 2020 for each of the occupations, the number of jobs in 2025, the change, so the difference between this column and this column, so elementary storage occupations have 39,750 jobs in 2020. They'll have 40,863 jobs, we think, in 2025. So that's a change of 1,113. In percentage terms, that's a 3% increase. But we actually think in terms of openings, they'll be just under 2,000. The education level column at the end basically gives us the average education level of the workforce within the region. So it's not an entry requirement, but we think that the majority of elementary storage occupations, the people employed have a level one qualification or equivalent. So really quickly, if we basically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, And keep that we've got a list of the top 10 fastest growing occupations at that four digit level which will see the biggest growth from 2020 to 2025 in the lead city region so we've got everything in there from elementary storage occupations cleaners and domestics which are at level one we've got kitchen and catering assistants large goods vehicle drivers at level two and then we've got some of those higher skilled 
occupations such as nurses, program and software development professionals and sales accountants and business development managers. So there's a really good mix in there for the region. You've got entry level up to high level jobs and it gives you um, a really good picture of what's going on in the in the region um, up to present kind of day and, and beyond. So I'm just going to jump back and that will just give us the whole list again. What we can do here is add a filter so basically we want to look at if we're looking at curriculum planning and things that are relevant to an education provider education level which is less than or equal to say this college or education provider just runs level one to three qualifications and we can apply that filter that then will basically pick out the same data but everything will be from level one up to level three so again, top 10, but we've taken out all of those higher skills. You can do exactly the same for um, greater than or equal to a level four. So what we can basically do is think about those high level skills. So we want to look at everything at level kind of four and above. We basically get the same list, but with all of the, the lower level skills taken out. So that's just a filter function which is there and the add and remove columns where we add the education level option is there okay so I'm going to choose here something that's kind of piqued my interest so program of software development professionals is going to see a six percent increase in the next five years so we click on this here we can jump to which is at the top an occupation overview so you'll have noticed when we went to the occupations um, tab down the left hand side and we went into all of the different reports we chose the occupation table but there's also the occupation overview section there as well so this just gives you exactly that a detailed in-depth look at the occupation that we've chosen so that's kind of the sick code um, overview and then we've got some headline figures so really really good for for marketing you can take these off the tool um, as well as that download image button, you've got click content. So that'll basically take this packet and you'll see that it adds it to here. You've got a list of all the clippings. So you can basically go through each um, different report. So we could do this for five or six different occupations, clip this section and have that five or six different times for different jobs and then export that into PDF or Word really good for building custom custom reports rather than just taking all of this off but again you've got the export or save project options in the top corner <coughs> so occupation summary for program and software development professionals so at the minute it's below the national average but it's set to increase or grow by 6.1% over the next 5 years which is remarkable as the nation's only growing at 3% the median hourly wages are lower than the national average though and wherever you see the text in blue you can click into that and get that in more detail so basically here we've got um, a percentile breakdown so what's the entry median and higher level earnings for that occupation again all regional so this is all specific to the region that we've chosen it's not national which is why you've got the national average there the regional trends graph underneath basically gives you the region in terms of job growth. So where has that kind of risen or fallen from 2003 up to 2028? And you can add a number of different regions in there. So where there's a cross, that's just what I've added in. So we could compare. So say we put in that Leeds City Let region, we could compare that to Yorkshire and Humber as a whole oh, we've already got that we've got the government office region there so the region is the region that we've chosen which is the black line which is above the other two the square which is the kind of the royal blue I suppose that's the median and then we've got the nation which is UK which is that light blue we could then compare that then to say Manchester 
So how does that fare against Manchester as a county? That will show up in green and we'll be able to see the growth for that. So you can add in as many as you want there and it's just a, a case of typing that in. Regional breakdown gives us the top five local authorities where the most jobs will be in 2020. So that's just the start year and your time frame. Job postings overview gives us that so that next level of, of employer data. We'll come onto this report in a second, but basically how many unique job postings for this occupation has there been in the last month? So, oh, actually we've got three months. So January to March there, we've seen just over 4,000 unique job postings. The posting intensity is seven to one, which means for every one actual job, it's posted seven times. This indicates that those employers might be trying harder to hire for the position because their hire, the hiring intensity is high. We've got a national occupation, gender and age breakdown. So the majority of program and software developers are males and they're in that 25 to 34 age bracket. In terms of job centre plus claimant counts, this is the last six months worth of data from the job centre. And it's telling us that it's risen slightly with a bit of a decline in January for people who are seeking work in that field. So they're qualified or they're looking for work as a program and software developer, but it's only at five for February anyway. And then industries employing this occupation are typically computer consulting activities, but they also can work in television programming and broadcasting activities. So these are those sub industries. And it's what we call an inverse staffing pattern. So you can click on any of these and we just get the same information as this report, but it's for the industry rather than the occupation. OK, so back to the home page. That's the occupation overview report there, which can be found in occupations and the overview there. So again, add that to your bookmarks and it will show up here. So we've looked at economy overview, which is a bit of a high level view of everything. We looked at the occupation table, which is the employment projections into the future. So what occupations or industries are set to grow over the next five years, we chose. And then from the occupation table, we picked an occupation of interest. And we looked at that in much more detail in the occupation overview. <coughs> Debbie, do we have any questions? No, we have no questions. You're obviously making it nice and clear. Thanks. Great. Um, so I'm going to take the next section for the job person analytics. And then I'm really briefly going to touch on course vision. So job person analytics is that real time um, big data. So it's the job person data. This can be found in the job persons tab. And we're going to use this job persons analytics report as you get more familiar with the tool you'll be able to explore these two but it's basically the same data in a different format so this report builder is very different to what we've looked at so far this basically is um a list of kind of you choose between government region or city so again this is the lead city let region which we'll choose um, and keep and then you've got the option to choose between occupation and job title. So on the occupation overview that we just looked at, you'll have seen there was a packet for job postings. You can get to this report through that for a specific occupation, or you can do it this way. So I'm not going to add anything in there at the minute. I'm just going to run a blanket search on all job postings within the lead city like region. <clears throat> so the first thing to, to think about on this report is the time frame so you'll notice here that's a month by month breakdown rather than year by year so the time frame for the job persons goes back to january 16 and then we go up to the present month so basically we add a new year's worth um, a new month's worth of data every single month so that'll typically come in in the first kind of week of the new month so if we look over March so March to March in the lead city let region there was 82,537 unique postings so difference between unique and total 
total job persons is exactly that. So how many um, without kind of taking duplications out. Unique persons is with all of those duplications removed. So the system can recognize where a job persons have basically been copied and pasted by number um, like numerous recruitment agencies, for example, or where a company's hiring in five or six different places. This relates to the person intensity. So for every one job, there's about six postings and they're on average online for 31 days. So this is all job postings. Obviously, as we add an occupation or a job title in there, this becomes much more interesting and useful. So average advertised salary in the region is 28K, which I think is just higher than that um, median salary that we saw on the occupation on the economy overview. So interesting to always kind of look at the advertised salary against the, the salary that we've got in the traditional structural stuff. We know that employers um, usually kind of more times than not put a salary bracket or a band um, in, in advertisement. So not the most kind of accurate overview of the salary, but it's good to see what that is. Regional breakdown, so where are the jobs? They're predominantly in Leeds, but also Bradford, York, Wakefield and Kirklees. This would be the sample job posting. So this is the actual job posting that we we take in the data from. Again, not much kind of use in general terms, but we'll choose an occupation in a second. <clears throat> and then what we basically get here is who's hiring. So if we we can see a number of recruitment agencies within that. So if we go up to this filter at the side and click on non-staffing companies, what that basically allows us to do is look at a list. I'll just take these out. So any of those. Sometimes you'll get a recruitment agency that will slip through. Just click and exclude from results. But what you basically get here is a list of the top hiring companies within the region so university of leeds nhs university of bradford aldi they're all big employers within the region tesco's um over the last month so what you could then do is think right aldi big employer or a big recruiter at the minute back on that report builder search for let's have a look in this region we want to look at Aldi. So once we run that report we basically get all of the jobs that Aldi have put out there in the last month. So 214 jobs, the advertised median salary is just under 19k, they're predominantly in Wakefield. This is all of the job postings so we can jump to the job postings list and that'll give us all of the jobs well, the top 50 that Aldi have put out in the last month. Underneath that, we start to get a really good insight into what the company's looking for. So this is what they're looking for in terms of that SOC code. So managers and directors in storehouse and um, storage and warehousing, stock controls, assistants, elementary storage occupations, cleaners, purchasing managers and directors, caretakers and sales and retail assistants. So that gives you a really good idea of that company's skills need. So if we're looking to approach this employer, basically what skills needs are they asking for? In terms of job titles, we basically just translate the occupation into the job title. So typically you wouldn't get a job person for a manager and director in storehouse, um, storage and warehousing. We're, we're more kind of looking for store managers. So this is layman's terms, basically. It's what will an employer put an advertisement out for? Um, deputy directors, supply chain managers, customer service assistants. And then within that, what skills are they looking for? So you usually get a list here of um, kind of five or 10. Well, basically all they're looking for is these types of skills so hard skills dealing with inquiries balancing resourcing and then 
common skills, so your softer type skills. Really, really good then for understanding the skills need of the employer. And then we've just got top posting sources. So not majority are found on the Aldi recruitment website, but they're also being advertised on these types of websites as well. So what we did there is do a blanket search of all job postings within the region. And then we picked out the, the company that had the highest number of job postings. So the um, kind of the top companies that were hiring in the area as Aldi, and then we, we ran the report on that. So if we chose an occupation, so um, choose customer service occupations, and we'll run this. You could also look for the job title. So very, very important to remember that when you're searching, is it a SOC code, so an occupation that you're looking for, or a job title? Job title is usually much more detailed. So think about that when you're looking through, because sometimes if you get them mixed up, it can be quite hard to, to find the results that you're asking for. So we'll look for customer service occupations, and then what that will do is bring up all the job titles. So chose this as it's fairly relevant um, at the minute. So we're looking over the last month, we'll just look at non-staffing companies, so just direct employers. And then you'll notice there's a whole range of different filters on the side. So we could just look for apprenticeship placements if we wanted. We could just run an entire search on just apprenticeship placements and take out any of the other data. We can do that in a second. We can look at non-remote or remote job locations, full or part-time, um, temporary, permanent, voluntary work, etc. So job postings, analytics for customer service occupations within the Leeds City Let region. And this will basically give us everything that we need to know. So how many job postings? Um, the hiring intensity is high. So for every one job, there's seven advertisements. The median advertised salary, where they are, and then the sample postings. We could choose over the last 30 days. So that will probably, it shows us a, a, a slight decline in the last 30 days, which is quite surprising actually given the, the COVID dashboard, which we'll come on to. Um, basically, you can switch between monthly or last 30 days. So it'll show you the trend. That dark blue line is the 2020 trend. Although we have seen something like a 20% decrease in all job postings over the last month um, with COVID. And then 2019 trends is where that was at the same period last year. Okay. Top companies posting. So Tesco, um, Lowell Co-op, some of the employers, Sky where they are so this gives us that city view rather than the local authority so leeds and york are the highest top posted job titles so basically what does that occupation code translate into and then the skills makeup so if you were to look for a role in this occupation these are the types of skills you would need so a lot of this type of data is taken into um, kind of marketing materials or careers advice and guidance. You can take this type of data and say, right, if you're looking for work in this, this occupation, make sure that these are identifiable on your CV or course design. If we're looking at developing these types of qualifications or courses, do the learners leave or finish the course with these types of skills? So again, you've got hard and soft skills there. Just run the report for, we'll get rid of that. Same region, but again, we can just look at apprenticeships. So for the last month, how many unique persons for apprenticeship vacancies have we seen within the region? So again, advertised salary, much lower, but we can just skip to the occupations and job titles. What are the occupations in for apprenticeships? So business admin, nurseries, food, 
store managers, electricians. So that'll give you a really good overview of the job postings for, for apprenticeships. Again, project can be saved. If you want to share with your organisation, tick the box there and you can export that to PDF or Word. So that's job postings. Again, remember that from an occupation overview, if we were looking at hairdressers, for example, um, actually, I won't. I look at nursing assistants. Looking at nursing assistants, run that. Um, gives us an overview of nursing assistants, the, all the kind of traditional structural data, but halfway down you'll see the job postings there. If you click on the job posting analytics option, that will give you that job postings report there. Just another way of getting to it rather than going back to the job posting section every time. Just a bit of a more um, simplified workflow. So last thing that I'm going to briefly go over is the course vision section. So that brings it all back to present day. So everything that we've looked at so far is really, really helpful for kind of getting a bird's eye view of the, the region that you serve and then looking in detail into occupations and industries that will, will grow. And um, that's great if you're kind of starting with a blank sheet of paper, but we know that you've got provision already, you've got your course offering. So the course vision section just basically gives you all the same data that we've looked at. But what we do is add in your course data to that section. So this, um, I'm going to run through this quite briefly because we do do a whole um, one of these sessions just on the on the course vision section alone. But just to give a little bit of context, this basically allows you to upload a curriculum data set. So this, this is made up data um, for the course page, the course section, but basically we would choose all FE courses for this made up college and it's a made up college that's in the Leeds area. So we look at this region because this is a region that you'd be serving. So in the most simplest explanation, what we basically do with this, this table is take all of your courses so your aims, codes and qualification titles, and we put them all into these, these buckets. So every single one of your health and safety qualifications would be in this bucket here. We then take the number of completers for 17, 18, for example. So X College offers all of these course areas, and this is the number of learners that they had in 17, 18. We can then map all of the hair and beauty qualifications to the jobs that they typically train for. So what you basically get is hair and beauty as a course area had 358 completers and hair and beauty qualifications trained for about 349 annual openings within that region. So you get your supply and demand. So that might show then that there's a slight oversupply so very, very slight, but there's slightly more completers than jobs available. If we looked at care, on the other hand, this college had 311 completers within the 17-18 year, and there was nearly 6,000 jobs. So room for growth there. We can also flip that table and look at annual openings. And what we would get is the number of annual openings within a course area that's the largest where there's potentially no qualifications so if I was this college there's nearly 10,000 marketing and sales jobs within this area and you don't currently offer any quals so then you'd want to look into that in a little bit more detail so how you'd be able to do that and when we're thinking about um, kind of intent and rationale and being able to evidence that to offset this is a really really good tool if we just jump back to something that we've got courses in, um, let's have a look. Engineering. So we'll choose engineering. We'll jump to a course area snapshot, which was that second report on the homepage. And what this would basically do is show us why we run this course. So this is the course area that we run. This is all the jobs that it trains for within the region with the number of jobs and the wages. Again, all really, really good for, for marketing um, 
material. This is where it's set to grow. So this is why we run the qualification or the course. And this is what we currently offer. So 114 completers, this would be the course offering. And then this is the annual openings. So that would be your course area snapshot for each one of your areas. So this is your intent or your rationale or, or why you run this. If we just pop back to that home page, so we've got the curriculum overview, which is that table. And then we went into the course area snapshot. We also identified a need there for marketing and sales. So this is a, this is, um, a business case report. So basically, we saw that there were nearly 10,000 jobs in this area and this made up college offered no, no courses. So let's run that in a business case. And basically this pulls all the structural data along with all of the job postings data to give you a really in-depth detailed look at um, whether this course would be viable. So if we ran this type of course area, this is all of the occupations that it would train for. We'd probably want to focus on things like um, the jobs with the highest growth. So these ones where you're seeing positive growth rather than the ones where there's a slight decline. So it gives you a breakdown of each of those jobs. It's set to grow by 1.2% over the next five years, which is good growth. So there's room for um, a kind of qualifications or course areas in this, in this area. You've got the median hourly wages and the annual openings. But then we also start to look at job postings. So, okay, so we do want to kind of pursue this. So how many job postings? Are, is it a difficult um, to recruit for occupation or group of occupations? If we just look at the direct employers, who are the companies hiring at the minute for this type of work? So there's a ready available market for it. These are the job titles that people are asking for. And then this is what we need to build into our course design. So this is what the qualifications of the course areas would need to include in terms of hard and soft skills if we were to run this course area. Again, all really, really easy to take off the tool in the same ways as we talked about before, but easiest way to kind of have, have a ready-made business case for a new provision this works in the same way for um a business case against something as well by the way so this is showing positive if this was a decline well then it would be a great way of saying let's not run this case um this this course because it's set to decline this is why we don't offer anything in it at, at the minute so all of the information really really easy to take off there and then you can also save the project to your homepage. So a bit of a whiz through that, but that's just kind of one module. Um, get in touch with whoever your account manager is to make sure that you've got some data in there. And then we do these sessions fortnightly. So we often do a full analyst navigation and orientation, and then we do um, one that's solely on course vision and curriculum planning. Um, this session's more of a broad overview to show you how you can use data in kind of every every which way, I suppose. Um, so I appreciate that that's quite a lot and I've talked for over an hour now. So um, I will leave it up to you guys to ask me any other questions. Debbie, do we have anything? No, we have no other questions. And just to say that the, um, the delegates, the attendees will be getting um, the recording after the yeah. um, wishes. Perfect. Well, that's that's all from me. I think if you're new to it, if a lot of you are seeing this for the first time, what you probably want to do is go away, log in, um, have a bit of a play around with it. And then that's when the questions will emerge on how do I do this and um, where do I get this piece of information from? That's probably when it's a good time to reach out to me and then we can just run. We can do this in a one-to-one -one setting and run through in a bit more detail. Um, so that's all from me then. Um, thank you very much for attending. Um, as Debbie said, you get the recording and I hope that that's been useful. Thanks very much.